Hello and welcome to the Today's Homeowner Weekly Podcast. We're here to help you with the challenges we all face as homeowners. I'm Danny Lifford. And I'm Joe Truini. And each week, Danny and I are here on the podcast to answer any and all home improvement questions. And we want to hear from you. Send us your questions or comments at todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. Okay, Danny, let's get started. Today's Homeowner Podcast is brought to you by The Home Depot, How Doers Get More Done. This week, we help a homeowner out with a mysterious paint cracking problem on a wall in one of their bathrooms. Also, efflorescence, it's a cool word to say, but not what you want to see on the outside of your retaining wall. We have a solution for that. Also, squeaky wood floors. Boy, we hear people talking about the problems with squeaky wood floors. Sometimes it's very simple. Other times, you can only kind of put a temporary uh, fix to that, but we'll share that with you. And also, um, stains on a vinyl floor. You know, vinyl floors shouldn't stain, but when it does, it can be a real challenge to eliminate that stain. But we have a few ideas. Joe, what about that simple solution? Well, I love using pegboards to hang up my tools, and I think a lot of people do. But the one downside is that there's no way to hang certain items that you can't hang on a hook, such as like a tape measure or, or a little can of oil so i've got a simple solution how to make a shelf that'll fit right onto your pegboard boy that sounds great we always have a lot of fun here on the today's homeowner podcast so let's get started right to the phones now with nancy in michigan nancy welcome to the show thank you tell us about your home there and and uh exactly what's going on i understand a little frustrated about some paint cracks yeah um with this is a house we bought almost three years ago it's about 50 some years old little cape cod one bathroom um, and we started having, uh, we went through and painted uh, when we purchased it. And we've had some issues in the bathroom on the wall with the window uh, faces east. And we have some parts of that wall, not the whole thing, that the paint uh, cracks. Um, we could peel it off if we wanted, but we've just kind of left it. Um, one area above the window probably above the window to the left, is um, has cracked, and we scraped it and repainted, uh, but it's done it again. Hmm. But the odd thing is it's not doing it across that whole, um, you know, that whole wall. It's, right. it's like in a large section, maybe, a, maybe two feet by one foot. I see. Okay. And, and then some smaller, some smaller spots down the wall. So it's not the whole thing, which is to me is kind of strange. Yeah, that is a little odd. And this is the outside wall? Yeah, it's an outside wall, faces east. Um, the one window, it's just your basic older bathroom with, you know, tub shower. Uh, we've got, we put in, uh, when we when we bought the place, we put in a new ceiling vent. Um, so, yeah, we were just trying to figure out, you know, what the, what some thoughts might be on this. Okay. Well, there's a lot of things it could actually be. I'll touch on a few, and then Joe will touch on a few. But, you know, you you have, um, of course, the expansion and contraction that comes with anything when you're on an outside wall. It's a possibility Mm -hmm. there's a little void in the wall that does not have insulation that makes it a little more prone to the effects of the weather outside. Um, Now, when you repainted it, you didn't get any indication that there was any moisture in there. You didn't see any staining or any... um, um, maybe a little bit of drywall damage or anything? I don't believe so. Um, we we have rental homes, that, and so we kind of watch for that stuff, you know, kind of know what to look for. I don't believe so. Uh, Nancy, the, I mean, bathrooms are always, you know, is a pretty hostile environment for all paint, you know, because of the change in humidity and, and temperature. And on an exterior wall, there might be some moisture passing through the wall. What is the house right. sided sided with? Is it painted wood siding? Is it vinyl? Do you know what's on what's on the it's, outside? It's uh, vinyl siding, I believe, over the old wood siding. Okay, so moisture is probably not passing through from the outside. I suspect. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. That, this is a tough one, you know, because, like you said, it's in an isolated area. I mean, unless yeah. you remove unless you remove the drywall 
from that upper section and really get a chance to inspect what's going on in that wall you know check all the insulation check for any voids you know make sure there's no moisture or any mold or something behind it because ordinarily any cracking or peeling is caused by not ordinarily the paint but by the substrate by what's what's it been applied to and how it was was prepared um you mm -hmm. can't you can't just paint over it as you've probably discovered because you know it's not going to hide the hide the cracking usually what you need to do is scrape it off Go over it with a thin layer of joint compound, sand it, maybe another thin layer of joint compound, prime it, and then paint it. But okay. you know, and I guess that, although that's a lot of work, it might be worth trying until right. you know if that doesn't work, then you can tear out the drywall as a last resort. But that that, that okay. would be the step. You know, unfortunately, those would be the steps to uh, make sure that this doesn't happen again. And and um, I think that primer is a key thing. You really yes, want a good yeah. quality primer, um, even a bond bonding primer. You'll find that at any of the paint stores, and uh, okay. that 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 might be just the thing because it might just not. Uh, be adhering to the substrate properly and that might be the main problem there may not be any other elements other than that i actually it's kind of funny um i remember a few years ago on the radio show we were uh, talking with someone and we and they had a similar situation i doubt that's the case here but we through the conversation we found that the lady used a lot of hairspray and that it oh. just it just by a random thing there you know we uh, she was talking you know i'm in the in the morning and i'm doing this and and I went, wait a minute uh, <laughs> and she realized she was spraying the well, the the hairspray uh all, you know the residue was going on the wall uh -huh. she repainted uh -huh. it she says just that one area it would not adhere to so wow uh, that's i'm not saying that's what's happening there but it was right. we we stumbled across that answer for that particular homeowner well i'm glad you mentioned the bonding primer cuz before you called, we were talking about it, and my husband, he mentioned, he said, you know, we had scraped it before and repainted, but we didn't use a primer. So he was, uh, he wanted me to ask you about a primer, so a bonding mm -hmm. primer is what you're recommending. Yeah, that, okay. that'll be that'll be your best bet, and, and, and that, that gives it a really good surface so that the paint will adhere very well. But uh, sorry you're having these kind of problems, but hopefully, hopefully we've uh, pointed you in the right direction. Yeah, yeah, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Our pleasure, Nancy. Thanks so much, and have a great weekend. You too. Bye-bye oh, Okay. Now. All right. Bye-bye. So we had a uh, hostile bathroom, did we, Joe? A hostile did we? Yeah, bathroom. I guess so. Yeah. Hostile elements hostile environment. in the bathroom. Yeah, yeah hostile, hostile environment. <laughs> yeah. Wow. <laughs> we didn't mention to Nancy. I assume she knows that if you're going to paint the bathroom, you definitely want to use a bathroom paint. A paint designed for bathroom has a moisture, you know, uh, uh, mold and mildew resistant additive built into it or you can add it yourself but you know that that might help the paint to you know prevent it from cracking i suspect it's some problem with the wall itself not the paint well let's go right back to the today's homeowner hotline and you can call us anytime 800-946-4420 ron is on the line from virginia ron welcome to the show hey guys it's great to talk to you Good, good. Tell us, tell us about this little frustration. We have a lot of homeowners that are frustrated about different things, but I understand your concrete retaining walls just not look like you want it to. No, it definitely isn't. Uh, I have uh, three three walls, and it probably runs about a thousand block, and mm -hmm. and I would say about ten percent of them have some degree of effervescence on them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I've tried, I've tried TSP. Like vinegar, house and deck wash, and nothing seems to take it away. I've considered I I have some muriatic acid, mm -hmm. and I was thinking about that, but it says on the label there it might affect the color of this stuff. And the block, you know, the, these concrete blocks they come with different colors to them, right? And I was mm -hmm. wondering whether it would affect that. So maybe you guys got some idea. Okay, sure. Yeah, we hear a lot about problems with efflorescence. That's a result of, of moisture there. Now, is this retaining wall inside or outside? Oh, no, they're outside. Okay, and I assume the efflorescence is showing up more on the lower part of it, or is it just random places along the wall? No, it's random. It's okay. random. Okay. Well, one thing we know that it is a result of moisture migrating through that, and I'm, uh, I'm, I assume behind the wall you have quite a bit of dirt. And how tall is this wall? The, the, the walls are on average about four feet high and they have, they have about a foot uh, wide of uh, 57 stone 
with landscape fabric behind it, uh, around it. So. On the back side of it, you have all of that. Right, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. And, and drain lines on the bottom. Yeah, well, that that's definitely the way it should be done so that you don't have that buildup of moisture there. And it is, are the walls painted or are they the original un, unsealed stone, uh, unsealed concrete block? No, no, they're, they're, they're not painted or anything. These are, uh, they're cast retaining wall blocks mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that, uh, that have a color, you know, uh, um, color pigments in with the uh, Portland cement and the aggregates. I got you. Okay. Um, well, I, I don't think there would be any problem in using, carefully using the muriatic acid with the proper dilution of it. Um, Joe, what do you think? Do you think um, there's going to be any coloration problem, or do you think um, um, something else might get that efflorescent off of there? Yeah, Ron, I'd be concerned. I mean, that would be a last resort, I think, to use the any kind of acid, muriatic, or anything else, because yeah, what if it does color it, change the color, then you have to do the whole wall? And that doesn't, you know, so it all looks the same. Um, well, yeah, go ahead. The, the, the color is in the concrete itself. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, but the muriatic acid might bleach that out if you just spot, right? right? So, um, well, ordinarily, if it's just simple efflorescence, you, were, you already tried this, but for other listeners, uh, one part vinegar, four parts warm water, scrub it with a stiff bristle brush, we'll get rid of it. Now, are you saying you can't even get it off, or it comes off, but it comes back? Is the issue that you no. just can't get it off? No, it just doesn't come come off, period. All right, All right. then you're going you're gonna to have to move up to a, a power washer, a pressure washer. Uh, if you don't own one, you can rent one. Um, right. And that that would definitely take it off. Um, and and I would in the reservoir I would mix a concrete cleaner. Simple Green makes one. Zep Z E P makes one. Rustoleum makes. There's a whole bunch of them. Um, make sure it can be used in a pressure washer. Um, um, because that that that's what I would do next. You know, if if this is efflorescence that you just can't get off any other way, um, a power washer would definitely take it off. Okay. Okay. Not, now, it doesn't mean it's going to stay away, it may come back, but it'll take it off. Right. Joe, what about some clear sealer? Do you think it, once he gets it clean and it's dried for a yeah, day that's or a good two, idea. Yeah. Um, maybe put a clear masonry sealer? Um, actually, Ron, you can take clear masonry sealer and put it in a pump-up sprayer, and right. you, you, know, you can put a coat on. Get a cup of coffee, put another coat on, um, you know, and be able to put three coats on there. And that that will, pro- first of all, it will re- help it resist any stain on the overall area. It'll make it more of a uniform look. It won't cause any kind of gloss. It might darken it for just a little bit, but it'll come right back to its original color. I think I would try that as a preventative measure after you get all of it cleaned off. But isn't the effervescence coming from the back of the wall and not the front? Uh, correct. Yes, it is coming from the back, but that masonry sealer will help resist that, resist that, so that it'll stay into in the stone uh, gravel behind it and allow it to uh, to drain off. But I think you'll be in good shape, as Joe's mentioned, with the um, uh, pressure washer. Okay. Well, hey, I'll I'll give it a try. Anything, anything to get rid of this stuff. <laughs> okay, <laughs> Ron. I got a I got a thousand blocks, so uh-huh. it's, it's a lot of wall. Yeah, it certainly is. Well, we'll rent you a good, strong pressure washer, and, and that'll make the job go a lot easier. And okay. Like we say a lot of times uh, here, um, buying a pressure washer is not a bad idea, because once you have one, you'll realize you can wash a lot of things, clean a lot of things around the house. Time for our Home Depot Best New Product segment, How Doers Get More Done. Have you ever painted a room only to find that the new finish scuffed up in just a day or two? Now, that's not even a question if you have any small children at home, but the problem is real problem for all of us, just finding that paint that's very durable. So Bear came up with Bear Ultra Scuff Resistant Stain Blocking Paint and Primer all in one. It creates an extra protective shell featuring NanoGuard technology so the finish continues to look new a lot longer and it provides excellent durability. Now, the real benefit of this particular paint is that even with a flat sheen, you can have a rich finish that's tough enough for any high traffic areas you may have around your home. So you don't have to compromise from the flat finish look that you want in order to get the durability that you need. Plus, scuff uh, scuff defense features an antimicrobial 
mildew-resistant finish along with a stain-blocking, stain-resistant formula. So when you have to clean it, it is a pretty easy job. And as Joe and I have talked about before, when in those areas of your home that are flat, uh, have a flat finish on it, sometimes uh, it's just about impossible to clean it. And even when you do have to maybe be a little aggressive with a sponge or a paper towel that's damp, uh, it can leave a little spot there. So right. this sounds like uh, it could be used in, in a lot of different areas. Yeah, and if you clean a spot and then the spot's noticeable, your only option is to clean the whole wall. Right, well, I don't want right. to clean yeah. the whole wall. I just wanted to get that one fingerprint off, you know. Uh -huh. So, uh, yeah, this sounds like a great new paint. Hey, let's get one of the emails. You can send us one at todayshomeowner.com slash ask. What a name here. Pogo Smithy. How Pogo about that? Smithy? Oh, wow. Pogo Smithy from Rhode Island ask, is there a DIY friendly way to repair creaky floors in a second floor apartment? Um, well, when you say apartment, you know, you're a little more limited on what you can do. And of course, it is very hard on, on any, and we, let's just assume it's a hardwood floor and they're squeaking when walking across it. Um, a lot of times we will um, recommend taking some very thin cabinet type screws that are very thin, small diameter, small head, and just try to locate exactly where the squeak is you need to try to find with using a very good um, uh, stud sensor uh, exactly where your um, joists are so that you can just randomly screw in that to try to stop that movement um, you know so that it's not rubbing and that friction of the wood rubbing together will not make that sound but um, there's also if you like the smell of baby powder this might be a good <laughs> example uh, for that trick Joe yeah, we've talked about talcum powder, baby powder. You sprinkle it between the floorboards. It actually acts kind of like a lubricant, I guess, for lack of a better mm -hmm. word. You sprinkle it in, walk around, kind of try to push it in between the boards and, um, you know, wipe it off. Don't vacuum because you'll vacuum it right out from the joints, but just wipe off any leftover that's on the surface. Now, that's not a permanent cure. You might have to need to do that depending on how squeaky it is. Maybe you have to do that once a month, but... Um, that's a pretty simple way. And there's also those screws Danny specifically made that are called Squeak No More. That's right. The system, yeah. right, by a company called O'Berry Industry. That's B-E-R-R-Y, O'Berry Industries. You can check those out as well. I want to remind you that our Today's Homeowner Hotline can be accessed at any time, 800-946-4420. And that's where we heard from Linda Perry on a recent call. I'm Carl from Springfield, Illinois. Uh, we recently bought a... 2018 fifth wall, beautiful camper, um, and uh, my husband was there, and he wanted bean cherries, and so he, um, I guess, accidentally dropped a couple bean cherries nobody saw on the new vinyl floor, and uh, it, the juice, I mean, the juice, you know, when you smash it, just is all over. I try to remove it from the vinyl floor. I've used so many different things, but nothing takes it out. And I'm getting ready to maybe resell this camper and want to know if you have any idea of what to use. Okay. All right. Well, one thing that confuses me is why are you trying to clean it up at my house? If I, <laughs> if, I, if I mess something up, I have to clean it up. So he's getting off easy. Well, maybe because her husband's not allowed in the camper anymore. Oh, maybe that's maybe it. not. He has been banned from the camper. Well, Joe, you know, um, it always confuses me a lot of times with um, situations like that on vinyl, but especially, you know, this is a fairly new camper, so the floor is fairly new, even though floors in a camper get probably quite a bit of abuse when you're out the campgrounds and so forth but still um how can it penetrate that top layer so wouldn't right. you assume even with something like a, a cherry juice which is pretty hard to get out of um, things that will absorb the juice but wouldn't you think that this is still on the surface i know you have to be careful not to use you know something like comet that would be abrasive but uh, right. what do you think uh, she should try well i think it might be an issue because first you know, it's vinyl flooring in a camper. So I suspect the manufacturers aren't buying the highest quality, thickest, most durable vinyl floor. And in a camper, you know, everyone's walking on the same spot. You know, if it's a vinyl That's floor right. in a house, yeah. you know, you're kind of wandering around. And every single person's walking in that on that same exact line where here, you know, if you're going into this camper, chances are you're walking on it. So I think uh -huh. that wear layer, Good that point. clear mm -hmm. wear layer may have worn off, which is why, and, and cherry juice is very hard to remove. But what I would, what I would try is um, mix up one part bleach with two parts water and soak a rag in it. 
soak a rag in the, the diluted bleach, lay it over the stain and let it soak for a few hours, keep it wet, you know, pour more on there, maybe overnight. That's probably the best you can hope for at this point. But you're right, I don't think I would scrub it because then you're going to have a dull spot in the middle of it. Right. Um, mm-hmm. that, that's about the only thing. I, I mean, there are floor cleaners you could try, commercial cleaners, but I think I'd try this bleach wa- and water solution. But again, let it soak on a rag and then, you know, lift it up. And if it's partially faded away, then repeat it. We'd love to help you with any of your home improvement challenges that you may have. And you can do that by simply giving us a call, 800-946-4420. That's what Derek in Illinois did. Derek, welcome to the show. And how can we help you? Hey, thanks for having my call. Certainly. Uh, yes, I recently had the basement remodeled. Mm-hmm. I had a contractor come in, and he put the the walls up, did the drywall, finished it, um, primed it. I had the cinder block walls um, dry locked, and mm-hmm. right now I know I'm putting vinyl plank flooring in with a vapor barrier underneath on the mm-hmm. floor. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to figure out what to do for the the baseboard along the cinder block portion. Okay. I know I can do I know I can do regular trim on the drywall portion, but it's just on that cinder block side. I'm yeah. Well, you can put it on there. I would uh, probably suggest that you try to match the baseboard that you put um, elsewhere and, um, you know, using a good construction adhesive that you can put on the, the back and then, you know, make sure the, that area where you're gluing it's clean and then just push it right against there. And then you'll need to figure out, you might have to bring in some uh, concrete blocks to be able to, you know, some something, sandbags, blocks, or something to weight it for just a little while, you know, to maybe push up against it to hold it there until uh, the, the construction adhesive dries. But Joe could also use some um, tap cons or something like that occasionally to hold them yeah. in and actually recess and then be able to putty over those. You, you get, you, how about another alternative than that? Yeah, I'm not sure I'd try fastening it with any kind of screw or nail or something like that um the the other option is uh derek you could put in a uh, vinyl cove molding now with the vinyl flooring you're going to need a little bit of an expansion space <clears throat> along the wall but the cove molding and the cove molding only comes out maybe a half inch or so but it might cover it i don't know if you're familiar with that but you just glue it right on the wall it's, it's made out of vinyl. It's got it's called cove molding because it has a little cove shape to it, especially on the bottom. It kind of flares out and go, sits right on top of the floor. Um, and that would be, you know, and plus it's really durable. Um, they use it in all, you know, you've seen it a lot in commercial buildings. That's what they typically put up. Um, but if you want to do wood, you could do, you could do wood and just glue it in place. You know, you could brace it either to the nearest wall or even floor to ceiling. You put in temporarily put in like a stud and then right close to the baseboard and drive in two shims between that stud, the temporary stud and the baseboard just to hold it in place. And, you know, this construction adhesive they have these days, it sets up within, you know, an hour. So, you know, I would leave it overnight, but it sets up far, close so quickly that um, it would grab that block as long as that block is nice and clean and not dusty at all. All right. And that would be okay with the dry lock already being uh, sure. painted on there? Yeah, yes. matter of fact, that'll be great because uh, I have a wall that I dry, um, dry locked on, and, and I did that very thing on some of the molding I put in. I just uh, glued it and kind of kept pressing it a little bit. And, and one of the things when you put that glue on and you press it against the wall, pull it back away from the wall about a half inch to allow more air to get in there and then okay. push it back up against it. And it really seems to improve the, the tack a, a, a lot more and holds really, really well. We've done it a lot with moldings. And, and it's kind of cool when you don't have any nails to deal with whatsoever. It'll end up looking good. And, at the, you know, you might have to do a little bit of caulk on the top edge of it since your wall probably is, you know, a little uneven. And you put that straight piece of wood up there. You might have to caulk just the top of it. But you can do that real nice and neat, and it'll look fantastic. Okay. That sounds good. And Derek, I would tap it with either a mallet or a wood block and a hammer because you really want it because construction adhesive is strong, but it's pretty thick. And if it's cold in particular, in fact, I wouldn't use it if it was cold. I'd bring it in the house, warm it up a little bit. You see, it'll flow a lot easier. And it'll also um, flatten out behind the baseboard a lot easier, too. But tapping it with a hammer. Good idea. And in a wooden block just to protect the baseboard will really set it against that block wall. Mm-hmm. Okay.
Well, good, Derek. Uh, great project. Sound like you got have some extra living space there to to work with, and uh, and best of luck on uh, trimming it out and getting all the finishing touches on it. Oh, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Pro Extra is the Home Depot's free loyalty program built for pros. Members earn perks just for shopping, like new Pro Extra dollars or tool rental perks. Get exclusive benefits every day that save time and money. And here's an extra extra. $20 off your next in-store purchase of $200 or more just for signing up. Want to save? Join Pro Extra only at the Home Depot. How doers get more done. Visit the Pro Desk in-store at homedepot.com slash proextra for details. Always glad to be with you. Always glad to share some good, fresh home improvement information. And also love it when Joe's able to share a simple solution. Because that way, I can sit back with my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> and my, I have one of those, and I have a pineapple with mayonnaise sandwich here. So I'm going to enjoy a little lunch here, Joe, while uh, you uh, okay. share a simple solution with us. All right. Absolutely. My pleasure. Um, perforated pegboard provides a great way to organize your hand tools by hanging them on metal hooks. But there are certain items that you want in your shop that you can't hang on hooks very easily such as bottles of glue tape measures cans of machine oil things like that so here's how to make a shelf for your for your pegboard start by cutting a one by four maybe eight or ten inches long 12 inches long something like that then measure in one inch from each end of the board and drill a 3 16th inch diameter hole into the back edge so you're drilling holes into the back edge of the board you know about an inch in from each edge each end and then get and be sure they go in the holes are at least maybe like an inch and a half deep and what you're going to do is you're going to insert into each hole a short straight pegboard hook they have pegboard hooks that are kind of l-shaped they're actually tipped up a little bit so when you slide these hooks into the back of the shelf the shelf shelf is actually tipped back a little bit so things won't slide off it so that's kind of an advantage of it but anyway so you put the hooks in the holes and just hook them onto the pegboard and now you have a shelf and i've, I've used one I, I started with one. I now have two or three on my pegboard because you just find stuff, like I said, that you can't easily hang on hooks. And uh, Danny earlier had mentioned, how do you keep those hooks from popping out? Well, a lot of times it's because you're using the wrong hooks because pegboard comes quarter inch and eighth inch thick. And so you take different hooks. So if you put a eighth inch hook into a quarter inch pegboard, it's going to be really loose and it's going to fall out. So first make sure you have the right one. And what I've done is when you get this right hook, I've just taken a short one inch drywall screw and I just run it through the hole where the hook is and it just kind of wedges it in there. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, so that, that, that's that's it. They do make kind of little straps and things, but I just run in a little drywall screw and it holds or use, the hook in use place. a tube or two of um, construction adhesive. <laughs> well, you out. have a lot of construction adhesive, so you're always <laughs> looking for a that's that's why Danny's hat doesn't blow off in the wind. That's another simple solution. <laughs> well, and also I would recommend, even if it's painted um, pegboard, the back right. side probably is not painted. And I'd recommend getting a can of spray polyurethane. Uh, shake it up good. Make sure, try to do it outside if you can, because it does require a lot of ventilation when you're spraying polyurethane. And just spray it. Just just coat it so that it's not absorbing moisture. Because if it is in your garage or, or out in your workshop, it um, you know most likely is not air-conditioned, and your humidity can rise up in there and cause some warping of that pegboard. So spraying a little of that on the back of the um, pegboard board's also a really good idea. I've had some uh, bad experiences. Yeah, it started warping. Yeah, oh yeah. So. It'll also warp if you don't put enough wooden supports behind it, because obviously the pegboard That's right. can't be flat against the wall. You won't have any place to put in the hooks. Right. So you put supports behind it, usually one-by boards. And if you put too many one-by boards, every time there's a board, you can't put in a hook. Right, exactly. Right? So you don't want a lot of one-by boards, but enough to hold the panel stable. There you go. Now it's time for our podcast question of the week. And, you know, occasionally we get comments, and we love those, and we would love for you to reach out on any comment on something that's worked well for you or something that you would like to hear us talk about on the podcast. It's easy to reach out to us. Simply go to todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. Here's one that we recently received. It says, I was listening to one of your podcasts recently, and a suggestion you had about making a throw rug non-slip was a big help to me. Um, I'm see, I am making my small living room into a workout room. So my son son bought me uh, the puzzle piece rubber matting that's used a lot of time in exercise areas. And I was going to use a non-slip rug mat to keep it from sliding around. But you suggested to a listener to use silicon caulk 
on the rug so that it won't slip. So I did the same on each piece of the mat. It works perfectly. I can do jumping jacks or whatever I want to, <laughs> and those pieces do not move. Thank you so much. What a great suggestion. Joe, you know, I have used that um, same thing where you take silicone and you just put the small beads on the back of a rug, right. or in this case, on the back of her rubber mat that she's using in her workout room, and it just provides just enough traction so that you don't fall down. Because I'm telling you, uh, a lot of rugs, you know, um, especially those braided type rugs, um, man, you can come in in a hurry with your arms full of groceries and you'll be on the floor in no time. Yeah. And we should say that what we're talking about is flipping the rug over, mm -hmm. putting a bead on there. Sometimes you have to flatten it out a little bit with a putty knife and you want to put a bead, you know, depending on the size of the rug, at least one on each end, but you're letting it cure. Let it, yeah, let it so dry. So you completely. don't flip it over because then, of course, you're just gluing it down. You don't yeah. want to do that. It won't, like, but it won't, it won't, it won't, it won't slide. Then, will <laughs> that's it? right. It won't, maybe, maybe that's another simple. So just glue the rug down. Yeah, just glue uh, the rug down. <laughs> but the idea is you're just creating this like bead of rubber on the back. You know, if it's a wood floor, you could put several drywall screws in it. That'll you work. Know, you just yeah. screw it right down, and yeah. you know, then you, you, you. But you really need to like the rug because it'll be there for that's a long right. time. Yeah. <laughs> but a great. That's a great uh, solution, and that's one of the simple solutions that you'll find on our website at todayshomeowner.com/slash simple solutions. You might be surprised to know there's over 500 of those on our site right now. We'd welcome you to uh, drop by todayshomeowner.com and check all of them out. They're actually video versions of them, so you can. See See exactly um, Joe taking care of a lot of different challenges that you might have around your house. Hey, we really appreciate you taking the time to listen to our podcast. And, and again, if you want to reach out to us and make any suggestion on things that you would like for us to cover here, you can do it very easily. Again, it's todayshomeowner.com slash podcast. And again, thank you so much for those great reviews we're getting uh, each week. Our audience is growing more and more, and that's because of you taking the time to let others know that it's a worthwhile time to spend with us here on the podcast. I'm Danny Lifford, along with my buddy Joe Truini. Thanks again for listening to this Today's Homeowner Podcast.